Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. It's it's Wednesday, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, happy Wednesday. If you are if you're watching with us live on Facebook this evening, welcome. So glad that you are spending a little bit of your time online with us. So my, my name is Justin. You've seen my face a multitude of times here on Elm Street Social Channels. But I am going to share with you a face that you've probably not seen a multitude of times mm -hmm. on Elm Street social channels. And we are very excited to have this person here. We have Jess Ford, who is in our upcoming production of She Kills Monster. So Jess, hello. Hello, everyone. It's great to see your faces later when I rewatch right. this. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, Jess, let's just jump right in. And, and get started. Uh, I know I'm excited to get to learn a little bit more about you and, you know, learn about uh, who you are as a person, who you are as a performer, and then we'll chat a little bit more about She Kills Monsters and, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. So the super duper, I feel like standard interview as well as standard date question, which is kind of <laughs> weird when you put them together. Uh, but Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm I'm currently uh, a, going into my senior year at Kennesaw State University, um, and I'm super excited about that. Um, I'm in acting concentration, but I do a lot of scenic design work and scenic painting there, um, and that's truly been sort of my passion there, um, and what I guess I've become known for amongst my peers and my professors is my is my scenic work. Um, I am currently uh, spending this part of the summer working at uh, Georgia Ensemble Theater in Roswell, which is very exciting. I'm so glad to be able to safely see their faces. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I just turned 21, which is really cool. Um, I'm a cancer. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited to uh, spend some time with Elm Street because I haven't worked with them yet. And I know they've been so close by to me, um, but I'm, I'm so glad to finally have been able to take this opportunity and privilege to work with a theater that cares about people's health um, and safety in this, in this difficult time that we are in. Yes, 100%. We're, we are so glad to have you be a part of it and, and join the family. And uh, Jim Davis says that <laughs> So, I mean, I'm going to take, I'm going to take Jim's word for it because I don't think Jim would lie to us, right? No, 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 no. Beautiful. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit of just kind of your, your uh, theatrical experiences before we dive a little deeper into She Kills Monsters. It, it was theater something that you always knew that you wanted to do? What, what got you started? So I started with my high school theater troupe um, at Roswell High School. Uh, I started my freshman year as kind of like a little, a little thing I was interested in. And I've, I've known it, I've always loved the arts. Um, I've always had an, an attraction to the arts. And I started my freshman year, a little awkward, very quiet. Um, and by my senior year, I became president of my theater troupe, which was a, a big blessing in my life. And I think once I hit about my junior year of high school, I was like, hey, I mean, let's try this out. Like, this is what I'm interested in. This is what gets me out of bed in the morning. Let's try it out. Um, so then I came to Kennesaw State where I'm majoring in theater and performance studies. Um, and while I've been doing a lot of focused on my scenic work while I'm at Kennesaw, I've, I've used my uh, opportunities with the community theaters in this, in this Atlanta area to kind of expand my acting resume. Uh, so uh, two of the theaters that I've, I've done uh, uh, quite a, Quite a, quite a, quite a couple of things. Quite a couple of things at um, our uh, pump house in Cartersville. Nice. They're lovely people. Uh, I did a show with them in October. I did, um, I did Living Dead in Denmark, and that was so much fun. And they're great people, and they're so funny and friendly and warm and welcoming. Um, and then I've also worked in uh, live arts in Norcross, and right now they are move into a new location, but they are also wonderful, welcoming people. And uh, I was recently, uh, in March, I got one performance weekend in, I was in Five Women Wearing the Same Dress, and I feel like that show 
really helped me grow kind of as an actor. Um, I had to experience a lot of emotions that I weren't, uh, that I wasn't able to really experience with my roles while I was in high school with some difficult situations uh, that weren't necessarily pertaining to me as a person. So it was really interesting to put myself in these shoes and experience these emotions with what I could also bring to the table. So yeah, that's kind of been what I've been doing so far. And I've, I've been really having a blast. <laughs> Oh, good. Yeah, no, that sounds like that you have had quite the uh, breadth of experience uh, doing oh, uh, a variety of uh, productions. And then on top of that, it's wonderful. Said, this area is awesome. I love this. I love the metro Atlanta area, the little surrounding. Oh, great. Beautiful. <laughs> there's so many great opportunities and there are so many Absolutely. companies that are doing so many different things like that. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I really love about the Atlanta theater scene is because no two companies really are alike. They're all doing so many like just varied productions and the reasons that they do their productions and how they do their productions is so varied, which I think is really cool and very unique. You talked about uh, scenic design. Mm -hmm. Um, so what, what got you in into that? Because you started out, you know, just doing like, uh, like doing acting and mm -hmm. everything like that. And then where, where did that come into play? And when did you decide, oh, I also really enjoy this side of things too? Um, so when I when I was in high school, I did a lot of the scenic painting for for my 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 the little theater company we had. And I was able to really like, focus in on that and it would just it would just drive me to just keep painting like it would something it would be something I would do like non-stop like no one could pull me away from it like it gave me like just such a great feeling once I finished it and then once once I once I got to college you know I was acting a little bit auditioning a little bit but I really found such a great support system especially from some of my professors when I decided to to sort of try my hand and pursue scenic design um, and once I started building like my first scenic model for my scenic design class, I kind of knew at that point, you know, I was spending weekends at the school at weird hours, um, and people be asking, what are you doing here? And I was like, I'm working and having a blast, like playing my music, dancing around, painting little pieces of paper, gluing them to things. Um, it was just it was something I really, really, really enjoyed. Um, and with it comes like the model building and I became like the scenic charge at the scene shop on campus, which was really cool. So I'm in charge of the painting that goes on with the sets. Um, and so that's been a really great opportunity that's been given to me. Um, but I, I ended up making like kind of a goal once I realized that I really liked scenic design to like kind of design something before I left campus um, next spring. And I'm actually, I've actually been uh, given the gift of being able to design for our fall production, hopefully, of um, Grace or the Art of Climbing, which originally was gonna be in our black box theater, but then it got moved to our big proscenium stage. And that was, a, that was very exciting and a little scary. Cause I was like, oh man, I've already like made everything. I'm gonna have to like re take some steps back and then like pick and choose what I wanna include and what I wanna keep. But it's just really pushed me like to grow as a person and figure out how to like figure out what my weaknesses are and how I can like pinpoint them so I can grow from them and who to ask to help me. Cause I like, I, I always knew that like I wasn't gonna be like it wasn't going to be easy. I'm not great at drawing. I'm not great at drafting. I don't quite know how things get built, but I have a vision. And so I've been able to like, with the opportunities that some of my professors have presented me, I've been able to pinpoint what I need to work on. And so hopefully I'm going to be getting into the stuff I don't quite really know how to do my last, my last year here. And I've already like figured it out and it's going to be great. I'm really excited. So seeing design just really drives me. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some of your upcoming designs. Is there a show in particular um, that like that you dream of like designing one day? Do you have a show that you're like, oh my gosh, I know that I would do such a like a killer job. Oh man. With, uh, that is... with the show and I have like such a creative idea for it. 
That is such a good question. With with my first scenic model I did, I it was it wasn't for a specific show, but and I have a point with this, I swear. Okay. But um <laughs> It was, we were just supposed to do a recognizable place. So I did a junkyard. Um, and so that was really fun. I got to make like a car. I busted it up, made it really rusty. Um, and then I was being told by a lot of people, it looks like the set of Cats the Musical. I was just about to say, <laughs> as you said junkyard, I was thinking, oh gosh, she's going to talk about, you're going to talk about cats, right? Right. <laughs> and I, I'm someone, I'm popular opinion. I know, I know, but I love Cats the Musical. I really enjoy the physicality of the actors, even though the storyline's like all over the place and there isn't really quite a structured plot. I very much enjoy the spectacle and the physicality of the actors. So I think it would be really cool to be like, come like full circle with like my first model being a junkyard and then maybe being able to put that into like play one day. I think that would be really, really cool. And like being like, I so I started here with what I've made and this is where I am now. Like, I think that would just really be really cool to look back on. Yes, I, I, I we love a good for, full circle moment. We love a full circle. <laughs> All right, I've got um, another question here. Um, I think oh, is, since we're on the theater train before, you know, before we can, before our next stop is She Kills Monsters, we'll just continue mm -hmm. with the, the general theater train. Um, just want to, okay. So this is from a, a very good friend of mine, um, Joshua Robinson. <laughs> he, he is asking, you know, who your favorite director that you've ever worked with is. And now again, this is coming from Doc Robinson. Oh man. Oh man, I, I, I gotta say, I've, I've had plenty, I've had plenty of great phenomenal directors who have really helped me grow. But I think I'm pretty sure Josh has helped me realize like some of my potential um, and has really helped me kind of like jumpstart. Like when, when I did, um, when we did the Christmas Carol radio play at Pump House, I was kind of like in a little bit of a, a, a theater acting funk and Josh was like, hey, do you wanna be my stage manager? And I was like, sure, you know what? Let's do it, let's have some fun. And then I ended up having a line or two and being on stage the whole time. And you know, that made me like really happy. So shout out to Josh for like really, really, really helping me out of like my funk that I was having, so. Sending love, Josh. Really appreciate it. Yes, I'll, always, always sending you love, Josh. So I, I hope I hope that answer sufficed for you. <laughs> uh, awesome. So let's uh, not completely switch gears, but switch gears a little bit and talk about She Kills Monsters, which yes. obviously you are a part of, and we're we're very mm -hmm. very excited to have you be part of the team. Tell us about the character that you are playing in the show. So I play Evil Tina, one of the succubi cheerleaders um, who torments Tilly both in this fantasy version that Agnes has created and in real life. Um, I think the there's there's some kind of jokes, joke lines about both Gabby and Tina, evil Gabby, evil Tina having insecurities like, oh, you know, like, Oh, do you think I'm ugly? Oh, do you think I'm pretty? You know, asking it to this to this poor tortured uh, gay girl, um, only to like shove her response back in her face, like having like a loaded question. Um, and I think that it just comes from I I think it comes from like insecurity and on they're they're of course they're bad people they're bad people like that's obvious, but I think you know, it's some of that stuff where it's like, who knows if it's going to be for life or if it, it, who knows, like, if it's going to be just like a high school thing, but it is like, there is a scene where it's like after, after Tilly has passed away in the office or in the costume of Agnes, where they're like, hey, like, we can put her in like the yearbook or whatever, and we can write something very sweet, but it's obvious that they've like tortured her, tortured Tilly, like, while she was alive, um, and I just think that's a very interesting moment because like while they're like trying to get her to like purchase like this dedication in the yearbook, I'm almost, I'm almost wondering, almost, I'm like, is there a little bit of remorse in this? 
like because they also offer and but it's also like they could be using it to make themselves seem better but i think it's really interesting to have like these really complicated high school characters where even though there might not be a lot of complication in these homophobic and mean bullies like high school is complicated um but overall they're they're awful they're awful um to summarize evil tab evil gabby evil tina um but you know like i feel like someone can always like with evil gabby evil tina you can always picture someone from your past when they say these mean hurtful things and but sometimes you know that they have gotten better but sometimes you know that they haven't but it's kind of like an open-ended question they're there for conflict but i mean overall it's a very fun role to play like being able to dance and gonna be like in like a cheerleader like uniform i mean that's pretty cool like it's it's not it's not a role that i would i would place myself in purely because I was like am I the cheerleader type but maybe maybe like the succubi is coming from like the black hair I don't know but I think it's really cool I think it's really cool to be like doing something that maybe I wouldn't like think that I would I would be in and I think I think it's awesome like I, I I'm loving it I'm loving the role I'm loving the cast like it, I'm having a blast I really am Yay. I'm, I'm so happy to to hear that that that's great i loved your whole uh character analysis that, <laughs> thanks for, for like, but doing doing that kind of work is important right. so that way you're creating like a like a fully dimensional character instead of you know uh, yeah just like the the mean bad girl but also i mean they're awful <laughs> pretty yeah. bad <laughs> yeah um so how do you balance then, you know, playing this character who, you know, who, you know, at, at the core is, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, evil is in the name. Right. So how do you balance that? But also, like, do you give it a, like an ounce of humanity? Like, how, how do you balance, balance that? Um, or, yeah, I'm, I'm curious what your, uh, what your process is or in what you kind of discovered so far about the character right the um so like in in the in the scenes where we're like in the in the D, D zone um obviously they're brutal mean awful evil um no nothing redeeming in the slightest i mean in real life not not either but like just vicious and harsh but there is a scene where they're trying to get get agnes to buy this ad in the yearbook for for her dead sister and they're they are trying to manipulate her but I think kind of like playing it down a little bit where it's like they're trying to manipulate her to make them seem good but I think that's also trying to make up for the fact that they are awful and that's why they're trying to manipulate her it's like oh this girl we bullied is now dead maybe they feel a little bit awful in this real life scenario but they're using that like oh i'm not a good person to manipulate someone to make them seem like they're a good person so it's not just like you know so i'm 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 exploring it so it's they're not just like static um but like in to to their core um they are manipulative high school awful people um, but I think that there's, that they're not just mean for no reason and they're not just manipulating her or trying to get her to buy an ad for no reason. I think it's just a cover up from their own issues that they have going on, but also seeing them in this like D and D setting, it's like, we really like, get a taste of how awful they were to Tilly when she was alive and why she just like this very strong character becomes so traumatized in their presence. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm, I'm very excited to see <laughs> how how you and your other cheerleader counterpart BFF, um, BFFs, uh, how, yeah, you know, how you you know how you show that throughout throughout the course of the show. So you talked about in in the D and D world, you know, things mm -hmm. kind of take take a turn, and in the D and D world, we see a lot of. Uh, fight sequences and mm -hmm. fight choreography, stage combat, whatever oh, yes. you want to call it. Oh, yes. um, uh, Two-parter question. Um, mm -hmm. How much of that do you do during the show? And do you have any prior experience or what, what was that, what was that like to get used to, you know, just such a different physicality for the stage? 
Right. So I'm I'm in one fight scene, one one real battle, but also one dance battle. We love a dance battle. We love a dance battle. Um, but uh, so my first my my fight scene is I'm I'm battling with like my melee pom poms, and in our world, in our world, our pom poms are um, supposed to be like razors, <laughs> like little razor balls. Oh my um, gosh. <laughs> and so that's that's a blast but it's also great because I'm like oh I don't have to worry about actually hurting anyone if I tap them a little bit with like and as opposed to my 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 fellow actors in the show like have real metal weapons um but in in my in my show in October that was last October with Pump House um and Living Dead in Denmark which is by the same author <laughs> as, as she, kill Mo- she kills monsters yeah it was really funny um uh I played the main character and there were fight scenes every scene, you know? And um, my, my biggest thing is I don't pick up on choreography quickly, um, whether that be fight or regular, but like if I drill it into my head and I practice it, like I got it. But I think like, cause always on my first day, I'm like, okay, repeat that. Or like, let me watch it a few times. Um, but it's always, it's always good to like, cause I don't do a lot of like choreography, whether that be fight or dance regularly, I would say. Um, so I never keep it refreshed in my mind like when I'm because when I get into it I can start picking it up a little quicker but now it's like oh man I'm back from square one being like how do you, how do you do a grapevine again <laughs> um, but uh, no it's 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 been a blast uh, everyone's been so kind and so patient while while like I I struggle to learn some of the things or struggle to pick up on something really quickly like there's been no like pressure or no anger and it's 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 been great it really has Yay. <laughs> uh, is there anything in particular that you're really looking forward to in terms of the production or you know something that you you want to share to get to get people so excited and pumped to check out the show yeah Oh, I, I I know I know that uh, there's been there's been some mentions and some talks of like adding some blood in certain places for effect. So I think that's gonna be really neat. And some of the special effects are being discussed, like a glitter bomb. Don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but I don't think. But you don't know where it is in the show, so it doesn't matter. Right, and you don't even know <laughs> um, like like it's it's gonna be really cool. Right. Um, but I, I, I think, you know, come, come for the fun fight choreo and the, and the blood and the jokes. Oh man, there are some jokes like written in, I mean, of course, written into the script, but also that we've created like, you know, people coming out from tiny doors who aren't tiny or, or like almost seven feet tall. We <laughs> love James. We love James. Um, so that's, that's hilarious. But just like seeing like some of the really funny stuff that that people have done, whether that be be through direction or or what they've come up with, it it's 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 pretty great. And also like what a what a you know funny, entertaining show to start off. Like maybe coming safely outside of quarantine, you know, just something where it's like I can laugh at this. I can maybe shed a single tear at this because it resonates with me and like have a good time. Great spectacle as, 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 as I think. (laughs) Yeah, no, for sure. I love that. I, I mean, you have convinced me to come see the show. So I'm hoping that there are people out there that you have now convinced to check out She Kills Monsters. But Jess, before we go ahead and hop off, is there anything else uh, you wanna wanna add before we call it call it an evening. Um, first, I'd like uh, if my mom is still watching. Uh, shout out to my younger brother Matthew for having a birthday today. Happy birthday! Got it. Got to do that. <laughs> um, uh, I think, like like over overall, if you are, if you are thinking of pursuing theater in 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 the world, you know, trying to find yourself like a theater home or somewhere to go and see some awesome shows. I think Elm Street is like a great choice. They're, they're very, they're, I feel so welcome. Like this is, I'm, I'm very new to Elm Street. Um, I didn't 
know anyone really besides like one going into the cast um and I was very I was a little intimidated I was like this is new to me like but it was it very welcoming people great smiley faces kind patient so if you're looking if you're looking for somewhere to like maybe consider calling your theater home take it take a look at Elm Street oh Jess you're giving me all the feels right now (laughs) of course (laughs) I got (laughs) y'all all right well you heard it here folks she kills monsters you've got to check it out it is opening in less than a month at Elm Street Cultural Ooh. Arts Village. You have three weekends to check it out. We're gonna be throwing out some more information your way about uh, some of our COVID procedures and what's that, what that's gonna look like for the theater, as well as some other options for you to still experience the show. If maybe coming in person isn't you know, the, the best thing for you to do right now, which we totally get and understand. Mm-hmm. But with that being said, we do hope that you'll check out the show and support our wonderfully talented cast and crew and team for this really special show but until then please stay safe stay healthy stay sane and we will see you later